Hello and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. I hope you've been having a good last Monday in June as we head for that big 4th of July weekend. I've had a little time off. I feel refreshed, recharged, and ready to continue navigating through this new world we're all in. Like many of you, I'm troubled, though, to see the number of cases of COVID-19 going up across many parts of the country and right here at home. Here at KGW, we're urging everyone to wear a face covering. It really is the best way right now, along with social distancing and good hygiene, washing your hands to keep the virus from spreading and to try to keep our economy open. And this is me. Uh, I did a little crocheting. I taught myself to crochet over the time I was off for my a blanket for my granddaughter number two due in August. So I was really smiling under that mask. There's Cassidy. So everybody, let's mask up. Together, we've got this, and we're grateful to have you with us on this journey as we navigate the new. Now, here's what's topping our news on this Monday, June 29th. And starting Wednesday, all of Oregon will be required to wear a face mask in public indoor spaces. The governor just issued that mandate today. Devin Haskins joins us live right now. Devin, how will this new order be enforced? Well, the, the governor says that she hopes the it's more of an educational approach. It is enforceable by law, but she hopes people will just comply, listen, and wear a face mask. The uh, She says OSHA will handle any businesses that don't comply with the order. You know, an indoor public place, we always wonder, what does that mean? Well, it's any place that the public is allowed. Lobbies, grocery stores, retail stores, and public bathrooms. Seven Oregon counties were already under a face covering mandate. Clatsop County was set to join them. Now residents of all counties in Oregon are required to wear a mask that covers your mouth and nose when you enter a public place. That includes rural counties like Wheeler and Gillum that have seen zero positive COVID-19 cases. The virus knows no boundaries. We're seeing huge infection rates in, in communities around the state, both urban and rural. We know that face coverings work to stop the transmission of the disease. Um, we're all in this together and we're all going to have to play by the same rules moving forward. So starting Wednesday, face mask coverings are required here in Oregon. They'll join Washington and California. So all three states along the West Coast will require face coverings of some sort, similar to what Oregon requires. They join about 20 other states across the U.S. with similar uh, laws, just like Oregon. Back to you. Devin Haskins live for us. Thank you, Devin. Seven Oregon counties, including most of the metro area, had already been requiring face masks indoors since last weekend. But the problem is not everyone is following that order, and that's frustrating some grocery store workers. Dan Clay is president of the United Food and Commercial Workers Local Union. It represents 30,000 members throughout Oregon and southwest Washington. And it's not just the workers upset. We have received numerous calls emails into the KGW newsroom from concerned customers like this one questioning why the Fred Meyer in Salem wasn't enforcing the mask wearing mandate. The companies we deal with for all intents and purposes have just said we're not going to do it. We're not going to enforce it. We have reached out to representatives from both Fred Meyer and Safeway, and we got similar responses from both saying they encourage and expect customers to wear masks. But when we emailed the companies back twice, asking if anyone not wearing a mask would be refused service or asked to leave the store, we got no response. We've gotten so many of your questions about masks over the past few weeks, so let's verify some answers. Question number one, I've seen a large amount of people, especially store clerks, wearing masks only over their mouth by pulling it down from their nose. Please confirm that the nose and mouth should be covered or they might as well not wear a mask at all. And that's from Jan Wade. Jan, you are correct. According to the CDC, if your mask only covers your mouth, you're wearing it wrong. We breathe partially or completely through our nose and you can become infected by breathing in viral particles. A mask worn only over the mouth won't contain droplets if you sneeze. And if your nose is not covered by a mask, you also risk contamination from the mask itself, which can collect germs on its exterior. So your mask should also cover more than just the tip of your nose. You need to place it on the bridge of your nose to create the best seal possible. OK, let's move on to question number two. Two. Donald wrote to us saying we operate a food cart lot. Are face masks required on an outdoor food cart lot? He asked specifically about staff and carts, staff doing outside duties and customers. 
According to the governor's office, employees are required to wear face coverings as they were under previous employer requirements. There's not a requirement for customers to wear face coverings outdoors, but they are strongly recommended, especially if six feet of distance cannot be maintained. And question number three, are face masks going to be required when going into state offices like Department of Human Services? This person is an outside vendor and going in to repair equipment. He said, and I was told that DHS were not required to wear masks. So back to the governor's office, they told me that face coverings are required for employees and the public in state offices that have retail like operations so DMV and DHS field offices. For the specific question about a vendor repairing equipment in an office building, face coverings are strongly recommended. Do you have something you want us to verify? Let us know. Just send us an email at verify at KGW.com. In other news this evening, some vandals left anti-police graffiti on City Hall, the Justice Center, and Federal Courthouse during demonstrations last night. People took down barriers around the Justice Center and knocked down security cameras. Portland police made eight arrests at protests over the weekend. The mayor's office said in a statement, City Hall is a historically significant landmark and a public building, meaning cleanup is covered by taxpayers, adding, it is disturbing and disheartening to see the acts of a few continue to divert attention away from the important movement of restorative justice. Activists calling for racial equity and police reform say a list of new laws passed last week are just the tip of the iceberg. Lawmakers passed six bills focused on police reform, including banning the use of chokeholds and tear gas, making it more difficult for arbitrators to overturn police discipline and turning investigations into police shootings over to the state. Activists say it is a step forward, but a very small one. I, I'm pleased and I don't want to seem as if though I'm, I'm, I'm being negative about them because I'm not. At the same time, I'm, I am concerned that some legislators will think, well, we checked that box, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. That was Akenge Harmon Johnson, the CEO of the Urban League of Portland. She points out in a lot of cases, the original language in the bill was altered or weakened. For instance, the bill banning chokeholds passed, but still allows for them in situations where an officer decides using deadly force is warranted. And the bill banning tear gas passed, but makes an exception if and when police declare a situation a riot. A top elected official in Clark County said she doesn't believe systemic racism exists there. And the council chair's comment is drawing a lot of outrage, with some calling for her resignation. Here's Tim Gordon with more. This is Eileen Queering, and this is what she said at a virtual council meeting last Wednesday. I do not agree with this letter. I will not sign it because I, don't, I do not agree that we have systemic racism in our county, period. Queering was responding to the rest of the council that signed a letter of support for the sheriff. The sheriff had decided to remove all thin blue line flag stickers from sheriff's department property. The stickers support law enforcement, but started as a response to the Black Lives Matter movement. When word of Queering's comments came out, it struck a nerve. Primarily because here is an elected official and going on record saying that systemic racism does not exist. My initial reaction was to put my hand over my head and think, I can't believe she's actually saying out loud uh, what she thinks. Both Diana Perez and Ed Hamilton Rosales represent the League of United Latin American Citizens. LULAC has called for queering to resign. So is the NAACP of Vancouver, which has organized peaceful demonstrations like this car rally. NAACP leaders would like to help educate the council chair about the reality of racism. But we don't feel that in her current position that we should have to have her in that position while she waits to figure these things out. We reached out to Queering, who emailed us back, saying she'd like to comment. But we've not been able to connect with her since. Meanwhile, a Change.org petition is gathering signatures demanding a resignation. Advocacy groups are not surprised. With just the outrage and the outcry of the injustices, for her to say that in an official capacity with such a callous disregard for the black and brown community living in Clark County, basically everywhere. We don't live in a bubble. 
where the systemic oppression that happens all over this country goes everywhere else but Mrs. Clark County. I feel like that's that would be great, but unfortunately that's just not the truth. Queering has said publicly she was taken out of context and will not resign. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Gresham's new mayor was sworn in today. The city council appointed Carolyn Eccles as mayor through the November election. Voters will then choose who will finish the rest of former mayor Shane Bemis's term. City officials say Eccles does not plan to run for the seat. Bemis resigned earlier this month after 14 years on the job, saying he couldn't manage his family business during a pandemic while serving as mayor. The Gresham city manager and police chief also both resigned this month. Firefighters are finishing up putting out a small brush fire in the gorge. This is video from yesterday. It burned about 14 acres. It started near Rowena between Hood River and the Dalles. Crews were back out today to continue to mop up. Officials say it was human caused and is under investigation. Part of Highway 30 was closed while crews put the fire out, but it is back open now.